Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Olnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with a card I'm calling the Dinosaur Stampede. And this is another in my Copic Plus Pencil Plus Craft series, which is technically not on craft. This is on Desert Storm by Nina. It's in their Classic Crest line, which means that it's going to work well with your Copics. And note that not a lot of craft papers will work with your Copics because they're made of something different. They're not made of the same thing that this Desert Storm is, but I call it craft because that's what we think of when we see this color. I'm using a stamp set from My Favorite Things with these cute little dinosaurs, but notice that they're not stampeding. They're not running. They're not moving. But the sentiment that I picked says stomping by to say, and I decided I'm going to make them stampeding and I'm going to do that at the end of the card but I'm going to get my coloring done quickly first. The good thing about doing something like a stampede and I've done some videos similar to this before is that you don't really have to worry about the coloring and stress out about it because the stampede can cover a multitude of sins. So if you have errors in your coloring or things don't blend well this is a great technique to use to cover that up and still create something that'll be really impressive to the person you send it to. But I'm going to use a couple colors for blending most of mine and just kind of get them quickly done and not stress out about it too much. I've stamped them in Manatee ink from Lawn Fawn. I've been looking for an ink to tell you that you can use for no line coloring. No line coloring is when the lines kind of seem to disappear a little bit, which is a sort of fun way to make it look like you didn't stamp the image, you just drew it. But this one is a little bit on the darker side, you'll notice, than some of the other ones I've done in this series because I'm using <clears throat> a full strength manatee pad. What I had been using before, and I still may use on occasion, is an old pad that doesn't even get made anymore. It was an old, like, tan colored pad, and it's so dry that I have to stamp it over and over and over to get any image out at all. But it works to have a really, really, really light image if I use that pad. So if you have an old tan or gray one that's really ancient or one that you just don't want to use anymore for anything except for stamping like this, then hang on to it. You could leave it open and let it dry out a lot <laughs> if you want to force it to dry out. And it works really well to create a super light image. Another alternative would be to stamp it in a juicy ink pad, but stamp it second generation, which would mean to stamp the image first onto a piece of scratch paper and then move immediately to your finished paper and stamp it. And if you were using a MISTI to do that, then you can kind of slip in a piece of, say, computer paper or something and do your stamping and then pull it out and have your, your real paper underneath of it that you'll continue to do your stamping on. <clears throat> Excuse me. But notice that the BG13, which was the base color for this particular Triceratops that I'm coloring, is not a very bright color on this paper. And that's because there's a color to the paper. It's neutralizing everything that's on there. So if you wanna use this paper very often, or if you wanna use a cream or some other brand of paper, then make sure you print out one of your hex charts onto that paper and make a chart of those colors or, or of all of your colors on that paper, because if it changes the color of it, you wanna know that when you're making your color choices. And here I was okay with it. I wanted dull colors because these are dinosaurs and it's going to be a guy card. So I wasn't stressed out about the colors dulling out. But if you want something to retain its brightness, you'll want to make some different color selections to make them significantly brighter. You can also use your colored pencils to brighten it up by adding some color on top in order to brighten that. But I'm not going to worry about that too much on this particular card because it's going to be all about the fun stampede and creating that on my card. So the dinosaurs here that I'm doing, the one on the left, I just stamped him off the page, but I didn't have room to stamp his little friend off to the right of him. But I wanted another di dinosaur to fill in, so I stamped just the head portion, and then I moved the feet up and I stamped just the feet. So if the stamp it itself doesn't actually fit together, so nobody's gonna really see that since I'm gonna have the stampede dust in there. So I'm not too worried about that, but I was trying to just fill it in so it looked like there was a big crowd of dinosaurs on that whole left side. And then we have the, the flying uh, pterodactyl. I'm gonna give him the same colors that I did for my big brontosaurus. 
get him all blended out and then start doing some finishing touches on a few of the dinosaurs, bringing in some of my other colors, taking a black pen to add all my eyeballs back in. You can actually move them to different locations because by now most of the color has been gone, that sort of thing. And then I decided to put some color underneath of where I'm going to add my dust storm. And I'm starting out with a little darker color and then I'll blend it out just a little bit with a lighter color around it. And that, a lot of that is going to disappear, but I wanted to have a base of something dark underneath that the, the cloud of dust will be against because things show up more when they're against something like that. So I pulled out a couple of colored pencils. One is chartreuse and I used it on both the bright green as well as this duller green to add just a little bit of highlight onto my dinosaurs. You can also go over that with a few highlights of really bright white colors, but I didn't want that to fight with the, the dust that I'm going to create. And then I found a sky blue light pencil that I used for some of my other highlights on things like my Triceratops. And now for the white dust. And you can start off tentatively and just put a little bit of it down. But on something like this, you want, the, you want it to look like they're moving. All of the dinosaur stamps are standing very still. So you have to really cover up their feet so that it doesn't look like they're just kind of standing there. You want them to look like they're moving because if they're stomping by to say something, they're going to be moving. They're not just going to be standing there unless I suppose they could be standing there stomping their feet back and forth, but that would be rather silly. So I wanted to create some real motion here. So I kept adding more and more of the white pencil and it was not giving me enough of that effect. So I got out a water-based Sharpie. And if you're not going to color on top of it, you could also just get out some acrylic paint and do this with acrylic paint as well. And I kind of tapped some on and globbed some of that color on and then I'm moving it around with my finger and just letting it splash across there. It can be nice and messy. And this is one of those places where now you can take that white pen and start adding enough dust over the areas that didn't work well. So if you had an area that didn't blend well or something didn't stamp well or the dinosaurs look kind of goofy together, whatever, then you can cover that up with this dust. The dust cloud can go way up high if you need it to. I took a dark, dark umber pencil, dark brown pencil and started adding some motion lines around a bunch of my dinosaurs. So they look like they're actually moving now in combination with that dust. And now that the, the dust is dry because it was wet before, once it's dry, I can add a little bit of scribbled brown color in the dust as well to add a little bit more depth and dimension and to distract from any places where you can still maybe see a little bit of the dinosaurs underneath and then to add some fine point detail, I'm gonna use my regular old white gel pen. And I can add all kinds of crazy dust coming up from them and blasting across the entire picture and make a great little scene out of this. I mean, isn't this fun? It's a fun way to create some motion on something. It'd be great for a kid's card. Um, in this particular case, it's for a guy card, but it's, it's just a way to create some activity and motion and action on a card when the stamps don't actually do that. They don't actually move and they're not leaning forward to act like their little legs are moving back and forth, but you can create that by creating this kind of cloud of activity and dust around them. You can layer that white on top of some of that paint, etc. Now, I want the sentiment to pull out of here so I've got it on a strip of paper and I'm going to use my fingertip knife to cut just wide enough of a little slice right there so that the roar comes in from underneath of the dinosaur. And then on the back side of it, right where I want it to stop, I've created like a little T, just a little scrap of paper, so that when I turn it back over and I pull, it's not going to pull out past that. I don't want it to pull out of the card and then they can't get it back in. So then I took some Be Creative tape, put it on the inside of this long strip of paper so that I could fold it over so that it's thick enough that it holds up for all of the pulling and tugging that it's gonna have to do. And you can see how easily it pulls out and slides back in 
on this nice card. I've popped up the the craft panel or the desert storm panel so that I have a little bit of dimension to it and my little stamping by to say roar pulls right out and I thought that came out really really cute. So I hope you enjoyed today's video that you might try making some of your stamps run across the card in ways that you hadn't before and I will see you again next time. I hope you have a really great day. Go out and make something wonderful and send it to somebody else. Don't hoard it. Send it out. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.